I know you look familiar, a lot of you guys look familiar to me, but I, I'm a dietitian from the University of Wyoming Extension Office. And whenever I come to do any kind of a program, I always bring food. Um, and I, a lot of times I'll bring it to, to demonstrate, to just show. Um, and, and then I always bring something for people to eat, too. Um, and Because I know that they always like offer sugar cookies. Um, mm. I don't know what else they offer. <laughs> so I always try to bring something that's a little bit healthier, especially since I'm doing healthy snacks. Talking about healthy <laughs> snacks. <laughs> So, and I, I tease them because I do check their menus and, you know, I don't remember saying sugar cookies. <laughs> so I made, um, these are pumpkin um, cookies, we call them breakfast pumpkin cookies, and I have the recipe um, for you guys if you're interested in it, but I'm just going to pass this around and there's enough for everybody to take at least two. Not that I want you to, you know, fill up on them or anything, but give, give it a try um, and we're going to talk about healthy snacks and I want to bring an example of a healthy snack and so I don't know if it's easy as it is. Or if you guys want to get up and grab one or pass it around, I know we're pretty um, we're pretty informal around here. I've been to I've done these chicken chats before, uh, and and done some some other stuff here at the senior center. Um, I've got a lot of stuff here. I've got some handouts. I don't know if I can just sure. maybe pass those around too, or maybe we could just pick those up at the end. Um, give me one second here. Okay. <laughs> Can I use you as my, uh, yeah, I'll be your as my assistant? Aaron Boy. <laughs> yeah, Aaron Boy, I like that better. Okay, so let me get some stuff out here. These are pumpkin and what? Okay, so they're uh, pumpkin, obviously, and then they've got some raisins in them. You can put nuts, but I didn't put any nuts in them because I didn't know if everybody could have nuts. And they've got... Um, um, you know, like cinnamon, nutmeg, um, some ginger, I'm just curious. seasonings like that. But I put chocolate chips in mine. <laughs> and, and, and you know, that's funny because I'm not opposed to chocolate at all. <laughs> Is anybody that's taken my classes before? Um, we do incorporate chocolate mm -hmm. into uh, things, and so that's perfectly fine also. Um, so, and I'll get to this stuff in a minute. What I want to talk to you guys about is um, healthy snacks. So what is the importance of that? Why would I take that as a topic to come talk to you guys about? Anybody just throw something out at me here? Because we're going to be smacking. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just ask, what is your name again? Clementine. Okay. What is a healthy snack that you might have at home? An apple. An apple. Okay, so that's a good example of a healthy snack. People usually think of fruits and vegetables as like a healthy snack. But I want, and you shook your head, what, what's a healthy snack that you might have? Nuts. What's that? Nuts. Nuts? Okay, another one. You guys are giving me some really good answers. Nobody's saying Twinkies or, uh, you know, a candy bar or something coffee. like that. Well, you said coffee, but I eat ice cream. The nut, oh, ice cream. And when I talk about healthy snacks, and let me just tell you the, the reason why before I ask you any more questions, it is because typically we don't get enough nutrition in just the meals that we eat in a day. And so we need to make sure that we supplement in some way with a healthy snack. And when we talk about snacks, obviously we're not talking about pastries or anything that's got a lot of sugar or a lot of sodium in it. We want to try to stick to something that is healthy and that has a lot of nutrients in it that's going to nourish our bodies. I don't care if you're, you're five years old or 95 years old, we have got to have those nutrients in our body. Very important. Now, really important when we get past a certain age, let's say 55, 60 years old, why is that? Why is it so much more important to get those healthy nutrients or those healthy snacks in? The metabolism is slowing down. For yeah. one thing, we're not as active. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We're not as active, which means we don't need to eat as many calories. When you don't eat as many calories, how do you get all the nutrition that you need in that, those amount of calories? Let's say you used to need uh, 2,000 and now you, you just need 1,700 in a day. Well, you got a smaller amount of food, but you have to still get your vitamins and your minerals, your protein, your carbohydrates, all that important stuff within a smaller amount of food, which can be difficult. It really can. And so we always like to talk about healthy snacks. In fact, snacks are as important as a healthy meal, as important. And then right now, uh, and when we do, we do a lot with pumpkin this time of year because it's fall, because there's a lot of pumpkins out there. And um, there's, uh, pumpkin is so nutritious. It, it could be something as simple as the seeds out of the bottom of a pumpkin. If you take the seeds out of a fresh pumpkin and roast them, very, very good, very nutritious, high in fiber. Or taking even a can of pumpkin, canned pumpkin is just as nutritious as, you know, just a, a, a fresh pumpkin, and making something with it. 
making, you, you can make muffins and you can make cookies and you can make bread. And um, we also put pumpkin in chili. We put pumpkin in French toast and in pancakes. There's so many things that you can put pumpkin into and what an easy way to get additional vitamin A. How else would you get vitamin A? Well, you can get it from carrots and cantaloupe and things like that and also from spinach, but pumpkin, if you like pumpkin or squash, definitely a very easy thing to add to any recipe because it's so smooth, very creamy. Uh, so we do a lot with pumpkin this time of year. And that's why I wanted to bring it as, a, um, as an example. So I've got some other examples out here too as an idea of a healthy snack. And you guys have a handout there that also tells you some ideas of a healthy snack. I think it can be hard to figure that out. What you guys think? Mm -hmm. It's not high on the priority list for a lot of people. What am I gonna have for a snack today? But it can really be a, really easy. It can be something as simple. This is another one of our favorites um, when we teach our nutrition programs, is this is just a, a fruit and yogurt buffet. And they sell these at McDonald's too, I think, but they're, they're not quite as nutritious as the ones that we make. But uh, we make our own granola, uh, but you don't have to, you can buy store-bought. Uh, but it's just uh, vanilla yogurt, and then we have a layer of berries, and then we have some uh, granola on the top. And simple snack, it could even be a breakfast. If you're not a big breakfast eater, you could even have something like that for breakfast. Because you're getting your uh, dairy, which is full of calcium, a lot of other important nutrients. You're getting your fruit or your berries, which is full of vitamin C and antioxidants. And then you're getting granola, high in fiber, high in B vitamins. What a great snack. Very simple to make, very simple to, um, to eat, because <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. Very simple, very simple idea. What about, um, somebody had mentioned fruits and vegetables. Do you like fruits and fresh fruits and vegetables? Mm -hmm. Do you like dip? Do you like to dip them in something? Because oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I don't really like to eat an apple, you know, crunching into an apple. So a lot of times I'll just slice it up, slice up an apple. But I liked it. And so what we make um, in our program, this is a peanut butter and yogurt dip, and it's just made out of uh, peanut butter and vanilla yogurt, and that's it. And we mix it up, and it makes it really creamy, because I don't really like the taste of peanut butter by itself, and the yogurt really creams it up and adds some flavor to it, and it's a great dip for maybe some apple slices, um, or even some like, carrot slices, maybe celery, whatever it might be. And well, and for me, it's hard. I'd really like it a lot. And so I would probably eat this whole bowl. So it's kind of hard to stop because it's such a good dip. But when you get something like a healthy dip, you know, it's, it's something like any kind of fruit that you could dip into. It makes it a lot more fun. I'm just kind of pointing it into the cocktail there. <laughs> you should use an example. Uh, you know, very simple. I just made this today. This, this is fresh. If anybody wanted to, to try some, I mean, feel free. All of the stuff I just made. Um, this is just sliced strawberries and some grapes. Grapes right now are on sale, uh, finally. <laughs> they've, been, they've been very expensive throughout the summer, but they're on sale right now. And some, some fresh strawberries, I just sliced them up and just made a little mini fruit salad, something like that. Make it up ahead of time, and then you're more likely to reach for it when you get hungry in between meals. So let me ask you, if you had breakfast, and then you came here for lunch, but you didn't eat anything in between, do you get hungry? Sometimes? Sometimes. Kind of depends on how active you are. If you had no breakfast, and then you come here for or yeah, and then you have lunch. Somewhere in between there, you're probably going to get hungry. Do you feel like you're going to eat more at lunch? Or are you going to eat more at dinner if you don't have anything to eat within that time? So that's just another benefit. It fills you up when you have a healthy snack enough so that you don't overeat at your next meal. Because I know if I don't eat anything, if I eat breakfast and then I don't have anything to eat until supper or I have a light lunch and then don't eat anything, I'm starving by the time I get home and then I tend to eat a much bigger dinner than I meant to because I didn't have enough to eat during the day. And again, that's why snacks come in handy, a very important part of the day. Um, if you guys like dairy, cheese, just like a cheese stick, yeah, that's, that's pretty simple too. Everybody loves okay. cheese. Yeah, just rip those open and you know eat that. The mozzarella cheese is actually a little lower in fat um, than your cheddar cheese or other types of cheese, so it's a healthier choice because it doesn't have as much saturated fat. But these are these are fun. Or you could just buy a big block of mo mozzarella cheese and slice off your own um, pieces. It's a lot cheaper that way because when they prepackage anything for you, it's going to be more expensive. But it's kind of nice to have it all ready to go like that. 
Um, and then just some other examples. These are a lot of fun. These, if you haven't ever had these before, they come in a big bag. Have you seen these before? And they're just a little sweet peppers. And they really are good. You could just take this and just bite into it if you wanted to. I do recommend washing first. Uh, but yeah, just eat these just as a snack. Or you could even put these in a dip. These are the sweeter peppers. As a matter of fact, as they get darker, when they go from green to yellow to orange to red, they get sweeter. And they're actually higher in vitamin C when you get to the point where they're red. So the red peppers are going to be your sweetest, and they're going to be higher in vitamin C than your green and your yellow peppers. And it makes it beautiful. It makes it beautiful. Uh, I don't know. I just love all the colors of the fruits and vegetables. It's just you can make it so pretty. Or I, I like to put these on pizza and things like that, just because it adds so much. It adds so much color. Another example is nuts. Whoever said that about the nuts? But this is a serving size. <laughs> not a can. <laughs> is, is, that, is that what you This is thinking? not a serving size, right? <laughs> so, um, so this brings me to two points. So I counted them out because it said um, a serving size is about 24 nuts, and so I counted out 24 nuts, which is usually just under a quarter cup is a serving size. Very high in protein. There, well, there's six grams of protein in this, but why is the, the serving size so small? Do you know why? Yeah, it's fat. No, it's it's healthy fat, it, and that really is true. There's no saturated fat, which is the unhealthy fat. It's all your healthy fats, your mono and polyunsaturated, um, which is good for you. So that's why it's good to eat nuts because they're high in that. But you're also going to get 160 calories in just this small amount. And so if you had, um, you know, two okay. times that much or three times that much, it's gonna it's gonna end up being a whole lot of calories. Even though you're getting healthy fat, there is a lot of no healthy fat in your because it is a lot of calories. Yeah. So what it is a good idea is to portion it out. Like you don't have to count out 24, but you can kind of estimate about a quarter cup and put it in a little snack baggie. Um, or, or take all the nuts out of this big bag and put them all in snack baggies. Because you guys know as well as me, if you were sitting down at the television and you had the bag open and you were eating nuts, you're probably going to eat more than 24, right? Because <laughs> there's no way for you to kind of keep track of how many you're eating. Um, so don't eat out of the bag. You want to always portion them out. Buy a big bag and then portion them out. It's just a much smarter way to do it. Chances are you're going to sit down with this little bag and once you're done with it, you're probably not going to want any more. Because consciously, you're like, I'm done. Well, whenever we're, well, as Americans, and this is interesting, whenever we're done <laughs> with something, how do we know we're, we're done eating? When the plate's empty, right, for a lot of people, I could say men, but it's women too, <laughs> a lot of men do that, when the plate's empty, they're done. When the bag is empty, they're done. Your brain triggers on, or uh, uh, there's a trigger in your brain that says, I'm done, it's empty. So it's much better to be done with one this size than be done with the bag this size. And that's why they say fill your plate, or don't fill your plate. Um, use a smaller plate and don't put as much on there because you will think, okay, I'm done, I'm full. If you have a big plate full of food, or if you go out to eat and they give you a huge plate full of food, you're gonna eat more. That's just how we are. And as Americans, we were always told, you know, you don't waste food, clean your plate. Um, and we call that the, being a member of the Clean Your Plate Club, and a lot of people are members of that. So serve yourself smaller portions, even when it comes to um, to something like a, like a snack, especially if it's something you really like. This is um, just a trail mix. Typically, I do put M&Ms. Who was said, said it about the chocolate? So what we put is some, um, um, here's just some rice checks or something like that, and some Cheerios, raisins, maybe some dried blueberries, some kind of a dried fruit, um, peanuts for the protein. And then um, I always like to sprinkle some M&Ms in there because it adds that sweetness, uh, that chocolate flavor, and it gives us some color. And chocolate or ice cream or whatever it might be is just, it's fine. We're just talking about we're not going to have it at every meal. We're not going to have that for every snack. We're going to have it as a treat, a once in a while thing. Because we, again, as Americans, we tend to eat that type of stuff more often than making it just a treat. Back in the day, maybe something like that was a treat. And then now it's available everywhere. Snacks, healthy snacks, not so much. Unhealthy snacks are available vending machines, the convenience stores, the supermarket, at the checkout stand. There's a lot of unhealthy products which are very easy to, to grab, but you need to make a healthier snack more convenient for, for yourself so that that's the first thing that, that you grab. One more example I want to show. Who likes popcorn? I guess that everybody, yeah. <laughs> Is it a healthy snack? Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. 
Can it be in animals? Yes. Can, yes. can it be in unhealthy snacks? Yes, it Certainly. <laughs> it can be very unhealthy. So what I did with this one is I just took uh, this type of popcorn, and I, what I do is I put it in a brown, not brown, could be any paper sack, quarter cup in a paper sack, um, and it makes more than this. It like would make a bowl like this heaping, just a quarter cup of it. You can salt it, and you can put your own butter or whatever on it. It's up to you how much you put on there. If you buy something like this and put it in the microwave, they're determining how much sugar or how much butter and how much salt is on this snack. The, the manufacturer is. And it's usually not the healthiest, even though this says um, this is Weight Watchers or something. Um, typically, they're higher in sodium and higher in fat than what you're going to do when you just pop your own, put it in the microwave in a bag, and then just put your own stuff seasonings on it. And I, and I think they have really cool stuff out there. I mean, like you can spray it. With the flavor, can you try that? It sounds kind of good. Instead of melting butter, you can just kind of spray it. I don't know how healthy that is, but but yeah, they're just a simple snack. Popcorn is healthy. Popcorn is a whole grain and it is high in fiber. And yes, do eat popcorn, just not at the movie theater where they put all that butter and all that you know extra extra salt on there. And um, another reason why I encourage just buying this or the kind in the bag rather than this is the price difference. If you look at the price difference on something like this, this is gonna last you a while. This comes, I think, six or maybe eight in a box, and it's not gonna last you very much. And doing it this way, you can control how much you make. Doing it this way, you're gonna get a full bag no matter if you want a full bag or not. So price-wise, um, this popcorn in a jar is about uh, 9.9 9 cents per ounce, and this is 24 cents per ounce. Mm. So that's over twice as much buying a box of these than it is just buying um, this. And the bag of popcorn, rather than this nice container, is even cheaper because they don't have all the packaging and the nice you know, pictures and stuff like that. So that is just an example for you. And I know they have some cool pop, pop, popcorn poppers out there um, that pop up real nicely too if you didn't want to put it in the microwave. Um, but I do highly recommend that for a snack. It makes it cheaper and it makes it a lot more uh, healthy when you, when you just pop, pop your own. Um, and that's, that's the thing too, is when you make your own snacks, it's gonna be healthier rather than when you buy something. And it's gonna be a whole lot cheaper too, rather than uh, depending on uh, somebody else to make that snack for you. Um, so some other examples um, that I have here for some of the reasons why the snacks are important. Um, so they're, they're going to fill those nutrition gaps, like I said. They're going to fill that, that nutrient need that you have that you're not getting throughout the day. Uh, they also are going to give you energy. If you are having a healthy, eating healthier foods or foods that maybe are a little bit more nutrient dense, you're going to have more energy. You're not going to get sick as often because you're getting the nutrients you need to help your immune system. Uh, it's also going to, and I already mentioned this, uh, satisfy you so you don't eat too much at your next meal. Keep your blood sugars consistent. Even if you're not, di don't have to worry about diabetes, which a lot of people do, but even if you don't, you still wanna have your blood sugars <coughs> consistent. You don't wanna go up and down all over the place and then you uh, have energy and then you crash. Uh, and you're more alert and it just does wonders for your health. And you guys have heard this, I'm sure, time and time again, about eating healthier food as opposed to eating food that's not so healthy does wonders for your health, no matter what age you are, it's gonna help you out. Uh, so I'm going to ask another question that I have for, um, for you guys then. All right. First, I want you to tell me, um, give me an example, and I started with this, but I didn't finish it. What is a healthy snack um, or an example of something that, that you all have? Now, I know you had said uh, fruit or an apple. You like to have an apple? And that's a sherbet. <laughs> What's that? I love sherbet. Sherbet. Okay. Now, sherbet is... Um, just depending, you know, there's so many different flavors out there now and different um, brands, but sherbet is low in fat, definitely. That because there's any fat in sherbet. Um, so with that, you just have to kind of watch the, the sugar um, level, which, which can be high. But if you're portioning it into like a half cup, or which is kind of hard to do sometimes. <laughs> She's like, yeah. <laughs> so if you put your sherbet in a bowl this size, or if you put your sherbet in a bowl this size, um, makes a big difference. I'll go for the bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty typical. I think that, that you Thank guys you. would agree that our our bowl sizes and our plate sizes and our uh, serving sizes for drinks have gotten a lot bigger over the years. Yeah. And um, 
we are uh, we do eat with our eyes, and um, and so we we tend to fill it up as as it's bigger. And I'm definitely with you too. I mean, I we have big cereal bowls at home, and sometimes we will put uh, you know some type of a treat. But uh, so something like that, and sherbet is more like a that is more like a, a treat, mm -hmm. you know, and, and less of a like a, a nutritious snack. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I'm just trying to get on the, on the same page, and I'll you'll pick on you. And you give me now, come on, give me, give me an example of a healthy snack that you might have. Banana and peanut butter. Oh, okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. How do you eat that? Just I mean, you put slice up the, the yeah, slice up the banana and then dip it in the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or something even like like the peanut butter and yogurt the two that you can dip into it. Okay. You make that ahead of time, or you just kind of do it as you I go? just do. I just use peanut butter. I don't usually make the dip, although I like the dip. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably a little bit more than I should. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You tend to eat more than when you're just having the peanut butter. Okay. A spoonful of peanut butter and then dip the banana. Okay. Okay. So I, yeah, and, that, and that's a great example because so you're giving me an example more of like a protein and a fruit, um, and she gave me an example of a fruit. You give me an example of of a protein. So we're kind of covering a lot of those important foods that we are supposed to eat every day, which is fruits and vegetables, dairy, and then also uh, protein and um, um, grains, which would be something like, of course, like the granola or with the popcorn. Um, do you guys believe in that? I mean, are you like uh, believers of healthy snacks or, or, or the healthy diet, right? Because you do believe that that is going to, uh, it's going to help you in so many ways as far as your, your health goes. Um, but is it kind of an obstacle for you to, to get those healthy foods in? Is it something like healthy foods are too expensive because a lot of people do believe that it's more expensive to eat healthy? Um, or is it just inconvenient to, or maybe you just don't think about it? How about trail mix? You trail mix? Mm -hmm. Just dip your hand in it. Well, and I, well, okay, so and then they have these big bags of trail mix. You guys might have seen them. Yeah. I've seen them at Sam's Club and Walmart and some of those other stores. It's a big bag of trail mix. And I'm a big uh, believer in looking at the looking at the label and looking at the ingredient list to see exactly what is in that trail mix. Making your own is going to be um, a lot healthier. The packaged, prepackaged trail mix that, that they make is really high in sodium. And they also have sugar in there because they have quite a bit of uh, more chocolate than what we might put in our trail mix. But uh, it is a healthy snack. Healthier if you make your own. Um, but always look and see what, what it says on the in ingredient list. They sneak a lot of sugar into our products these days in the form of um, corn syrup or high fructose corn syrup. And, it, and if it's anywhere near the top of the ingredient list, then you know it's pretty high in that particular um, in, in, in sugar. I picked up one that had a lot of uh, sliced dried fruit in it. It has sliced dried fruit? Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, dried fruit can also be a source of sugar. Um, it's kind of what we call a hidden source of sugar. But uh, fruit has sugar in it naturally. And so on the label, it can be hard to tell how much of that sugar is natural sugar and how much of it is added sugar. And so, again, if you look at the, at the label and if they've added any high fructose corn syrup, then you know that they've added sugar in there and it's not coming just from the, the actual fruit. It can be tricky when you're buying packaged food or packaged snacks. It can be very tricky to figure out whether or not, is this healthy? The label says it is. Or the package says it is. But, but what is the truth? Because you guys have probably noticed, as much as I have, that, that a food manufacturer can be very deceiving. They, the, the packaging can be deceiving where you think it's a healthy choice and it really isn't. And it's, it's too bad that it has to be that. But a lot of times it comes down to money. And you know, how do you guys buy the product? And, and that's why I say just make your own. Make it so much easier. You have to talk about pickled vegetables. That's what I had. Like my granddaughter gave me a jar of pickled asparagus, green beans, oh, wow. and onions. Okay. And I saved the brine, so then I steamed some more vegetables and put <laughs> so <laughs> there was no more <laughs> left in the brine. <laughs> Yeah, or even pickles. I uh, another friend right. gave me pickles, and I love to snack on those. And then I just took a plain cucumber and sliced it up, and if you leave it marinated in that, it'll pick up the flavor too. Which is yeah, and we, we make those in my canning class. We do the canning classes, and we'll pickle vegetables. And uh, that is a great way to just yeah, you can just pull it out of the jar and just have that as a snack. Yeah. That's a really good example of having vegetables as a snack in a different way. Mm -hmm. Because people don't typically think of vegetables mm -hmm. as a good snack. I mean, yeah, carrot sticks and celery, right? You know, most people don't really like that. It's just not real flavorful unless you put it 
unless you have a dip, <laughs> then it makes it a lot better. But that's a good idea on how to um, eat something, eat something like a vegetable, mm -hmm. but in a different way. Yeah. As the a other snack. thing she does is, uh, I haven't tried it yet, but she yeah, steams those little baby carrots in just canned broth. And they, they're really yeah. sweet, those little carrots anyway, and it gives them a different flavor when you steam them. That's a great idea. Broth. So, that's a great idea because so yeah. some of the ideas I have are uh, pretty basic, pretty simple, mm -hmm. but that's what we want to stick with is, is simple. Easy. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. easy because mm -hmm. we talk to a lot of different groups of people and that's the one thing that everybody really wants is what is something that I can eat that's healthy, that's inexpensive, and that is simple for me to make. That's not yeah. going to be available a lot in of production. are alone, so you have to figure out these things that are easier you won't do that period right well and won't. something that you can pre that you can make a prepackage ahead of time that you can just grab right if, if you're going to make something like um oh i don't know i don't really have it here as an example but if you're going to make something as a snack make extra and if it's something that you can freeze let's say berries let's say you buy a big thing of strawberries and you know you're not going to eat it by yourself because mm -hmm. it's, it's too many or blueberries or something like that freeze them mm -hmm. and then you can just grab the little baggie out of the freezer whenever you want to have some blueberries in your cereal or in your yogurt or whatever. But just working it and planning a little bit ahead of time is going to save you a lot of time and it's also going to give you that snack that you're you're wanting. I mean, there's sometimes you really do crave a healthy snack and it's not available and so you grab mm -hmm. the chips or whatever it might be. And I, I mean, that's what I do when I get home from work. If there's not something for me to grab that's, you know, that I really like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the... Uh, for the um, Fritos because my husband has them in that cupboard and I like them and you know it's not a horrible choice but I'd rather go and grab something that's that's ready to go or eat it on my way home so that way by the time I get home I'm not going to be hungry it's just that that the unhealthy snacks are eating foods and we, if we don't plan it ahead of time we tend to not eat very healthy foods if it's not planned out and then somebody brings over a pie or some you know somebody brings over a cake or whatever it might be and then we eat that and, and <coughs> You know, sometimes you don't feel real good after eating something like that. You feel a little, a little um, rather than having something that's a little healthier that's available, that's going to give you the nutrients that you need. Supplements are not going to cover that gap. Right? You can't just take a supplement and call it good. The supplements, and I'll use vitamin C as an example, it, it doesn't get absorbed as well as just getting your vitamin C from real food. You know, this is probably, I would think, eating something like this in the day, it's going to give you more than, than what you need, more than 100% of vitamin C just in something like this. Taking a supplement is, is not going to be absorbed as well. You might have to take extra. It's just you don't know how much of it. I, it's just supplements, and I, don't, and I just talk about supplements with most groups that I talk to because I know they're very popular today, um, but you just aren't going to get the nutrients that you need in something like a supplement in the quantity that you need. Something like this, and I'm talking about the vitamin C that we see in here, and the strawberries and then the grapes, but there's so many other nutrients in here, micronutrients in small amounts, and fiber that you're not going to get from a supplement, you know, at all. You're going to get maybe vitamin C from a supplement. You're not going to get all the extra goodies that are in there that I couldn't even count how many micronutrients are in something like this. We really wanted to get down to the details of it. I love to talk about food. <laughs> Love to talk about nutrition, uh, but that, does that kind of give you guys an idea of, of how simple it can be? Or I mean, you might already know that. You might already be on that page where, yeah, healthy snacks are, are great, mm -hmm. and I try to make them available most days. Um, that, that's what I like to hear. You guys are doing that. Um, what about something like a smoothie? Yeah. yeah. Maybe not in the winters as much as in the summertime or in the fall, but um, putting something like, uh, we always do berries with our smoothies or bananas and some yogurt and milk. What about putting spinach or kale on a smoothie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they always one face. Um, they, they do it on Dr. Oz and they swear them down and taste good. I've not tried it. <laughs> yeah. Um, people in my class, I, everybody that goes through any of the programs that I do, we always put spinach or kale in, in the smoothie. And what happens is the, um, the blades of blender uh, just, what do you call it? Just Blends it up really well. I guess that's the only word. That's the other word. You don't taste it like, like if you think you're going to be drinking a green smoothie, you know that tastes like spinach. That's not the way that it is. I put I do it with blueberries and strawberries, and and then we put like two cups of spinach, raw spinach, and and it blends it up really nicely. So you can't even see it. There might be some little specks of green, but the flavor is still the berry flavor. 
It's a great way to get some extra nutrient. Has anybody done it? I mean, yeah, you said. Diane or Judy? I always forget between the Diane. two. Diane, thank you. <laughs> Diane slash Judy, Diane. You had it. Has anybody else had a, a smoothie where you put in something like, like fresh mm -hmm. greens? I mean, tr try that. Because you're going to get plenty, a lot of nutrition from the fruit that you're putting in the smoothie and the milk and stuff. But putting in those greens, that just gives you added nutrition. It's good. I wouldn't call that a smoothie. I'd call it a, <laughs> a protein <laughs> drink. I would make it with juice and the greens to yeah, make you're, a drink, but I wouldn't call it a smoothie. Yeah, you're kind of imagining, yeah, like one of those, uh, yeah, like a, a juicer or a protein drink or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's what I mean. But, uh, and what's nice is you can choose how much you want to put in there, but even just a handful, putting it into a big blender full, uh, and that's a good thing to make ahead of time because it will last for a couple days and you can have it for more than just one, one snack. It really is good. If, you, if any of you guys like smoothies or make smoothies, just humor me and try that one time and put oh, like, uh, just a handful of spinach in it. Um, it adds a, a whole lot of nutrition and it really is, it, it really does taste good. We, we did it with uh, like third graders one year and, and the, yeah, they were just spat, ooh. And, um, you know, do I have to drink that? And I'm allergic to spinach. <laughs> you know, we get little things like that from the kids. Uh, but they made them, and of course they drank them because all their friends were drinking them. And they were nice and purple, you know, nice color, and they drank them on down. Yeah, they're, well, from, we put blueberries and strawberries. So there's no green, unless you put a lot of spinach in there, you're not gonna have a green smoothie. It's going to be, a regular, you, know, you don't even know spinach is in there. Okay? You, yeah, you know that you've had it before. You don't even know. And then we put milk and yogurt too. And some honey to sweeten it a little bit more. But there's so much natural sweetness uh, from the berries that, or even the bananas if you put it in there, that you're not going to taste any spinach. And even if you did, it's, I think spinach is good. But you're not going to notice it. You could do it and give it to a grandchild or to a husband or somebody else, and they're not going to know. <laughs> try to try to pull one over on somebody and see if they notice. It's just a really good way to get in some extra nutrients. But a smoothie by itself is also very healthy. So I used to do that, except I put protein powder in there. Do you need the, the protein powder in the smoothie? Or, you know, well, you you're getting quite a bit of protein if you're using a uh, dairy product, milk or, or yogurt. You're getting quite a, quite a bit of protein just. Okay just from that, um, so I don't think it's necessary. Um, a lot of times we'll have athletes that'll do that because they need the added protein because they're building up their muscles. And things like that. I don't need that. <laughs> sort of walking around. But, um, but we don't need as much protein as what we think we do. Um, we only need about, um, well, about 20, 15 to 20% of our diet is protein. And so it's not necessary because you get plenty of protein with things like, um, you know, the dairy products, beans, um, if you eat meat, um, all of those very, very high in protein. So uh, a protein supplement isn't, isn't something that's necessary unless you're bulking up, you know, working out with weights and, and stuff like that. But um, definitely it, it, it is a need with um, seniors because that's another wonderful thing as we get older is that we don't absorb uh, nutrients as well. And so we do need to make sure that we're getting plenty of uh, certain nutrients. Calcium is one of them. We have, we're prone to, to fractures and falls and things like that, and so making sure the bones stay strong on and nothing, um, none of the calcium is being drawn from our bones. We do that by, um, and a lot of people probably do take calcium supplements and also getting it from your diet. And that would be mostly dairy products. And so if you don't eat much meat, then probably meat. Yeah. Well, we, yeah, with, with meat, if you don't eat meat, and we know a lot of people who are either vegetarians or vegans and they don't eat um, any animal products, which is where you're going to find your protein, um, it is necessary to supplement and also get it from um, th yeah, things like beans and then some uh, other foods like the nuts, things like that, that are, a little bit, that are higher protein and just having larger quantities of it. And you know, tofu, there's a lot of some soy products and things that, that are higher protein. But they really, if you don't eat meat or decide not to eat meat, then you have to make sure that you're, you're getting your protein from some other, from some other source. Mm -hmm. I mean, very important. Mm -hmm. right? Just because you're missing out on, on some of those important nutrients is just going to, to, to hurt you in the long run. You know, I mean, we talk to teenagers, I mean, you guys are, you know, are listening, but we have teenagers sitting you know, in our classes with their bottle of Mountain Dew, and you know, they got a pack of uh, M&Ms or something, <laughs> and, you know, and we tell them all about healthy eating and everything, but uh, 
you know, they don't always listen to what we have to say, but we hope we're putting some kind of a seed in there so that at some point it will start to grow and, and they'll realize how important it is to, to make healthier choices. Because as America, again, as Americans, but we are, we're overfed, but we're undernourished. And there's a lot of food available to us. We have a lot of food available. It's everywhere. But typically it's not, they're, they're not nutritious choices that we have. Um, but we eat a lot, we just don't get enough nutrition in the food. We, we used to, but not so much anymore with all of the new uh, products that are out there on the market that are, that are high in sodium and high in fat. Um, and so what I want to do is just talk for a couple minutes as I finish, and this really doesn't have a lot to do with snacking, but I did want to talk for just a minute about a couple uh, food safety concepts. And one of them is hand washing. Whenever I talk about food, or preparing food, or maybe making food for somebody, always have to make sure you wash your hands. This is flu season, that's another good reason. There's a lot of nasty things out there that you can catch from other people or from surfaces, so you have to make sure that you wash your hands before eating and also before preparing food. Um, extremely important on that. And another thing that I like to cover as far as washing goes is washing uh, your your produce. Like you talk about, you know, apples, or if you have, I don't know, let's say carrots or celery or something like a cantaloupe, you have to wash it. For one thing, we don't know where it came from. We don't know who's had their hands on it. We don't know uh, uh, where it's grown. It's grown on the ground. There's other things on the ground that we certainly don't want to put into our mouth. But what about something like a cantaloupe? Um, this is just a little little baby cantaloupe. Uh, I'm not going to eat the, the skin. So why is it necessary to, uh, to scrub it? And this is an example of a little scrubber that we, we can buy and just scrub it up. Why do I have to do that? Because the knife bring when you cut it. In. In. Because right? nice, when you slice, it brings germs in it. Yeah. Got right. So we always, you know, we always have to double um, stuff like that. So yeah, most definitely, uh, you can let, or like a, a watermelon or anything that you know you're not going to eat the uh, skin, but you're going to cut through it. And so when it's growing on the ground, it's something like a cantaloupe that grows on the ground. Uh, it, you are at risk for, for a lot of different microorganisms, and one of them is um, E. coli, because E. coli is present in the feces of animals. And so if there's any of that present, and it gets anywhere near the cantaloupe, um, you can actually get E. coli. It's, it's more typical with meat, um, but you can get it from, from vegetables also. You can actually get salmonella from something like a cantaloupe. And then um, a couple of years ago in Colorado, they had that farm that had a outbreak of listeriosis um, or listeria, which is very, very dangerous. And it was because of uh, uh, unsanitary uh, conditions that were on the uh, in the farm. But so if I use something like that, and we say this is something that that was on the ground that got onto the um, cantaloupe, and and a lot of people actually don't realize this about washing something like a cantaloupe. But you've got that on the skin, and then you and then you're going to slice through it and eat this. Anything that has been on the surface, if you could actually see it go through, this is what okay. what it could possibly look like. Um, if that microorganism got through with that knife, and it will bring it through to the inside where you're actually going to eat it. And so that that's a good thing to remember. It could be a, a, a cantaloupe. It really could be anything that you're going to cut through, um, and then serve. It's going to go through to the inside of it, and it could make you sick. Yeah, go ahead. Years ago they had, um, I don't know if everyone heard this, but you should always wash the outside of a pop can, beer can, whatever, because they're packing it in a warehouse and there are mice, and they had found mice urine on those cans. And so they suggested that people would just, if you're going to drink it from the can, to clean that up. And I never thought about that. Even if you're not going to drink it from the can, and you're yeah, going to pour you it out. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not, they yeah. aren't sanitary. We think that just because we buy it out of a store that they are, but they, they've been uh, stored in a warehouse, which little mice and rats yeah. get on it. Because it's, it's an open area, yeah, and there's nothing sanitary. Yeah. I mean, it could be the case where there's not a whole lot sanitary. Uh, some of the conditions in some of the warehouses, um, and I always think about things like, uh, animals or poultry or, or beef or something, but definitely um, something like that. I, I've heard that. Um, you know, we, we come away thinking, "Wow, I can't, you know, I, I can't wash everything. You know, because sick." But you are taking that chance with with just about anything because um, you know, if you have a, an immune system that's not working 100%, and then you consume something like that, your body's not going to be able to fight it off, and then you're going to have a heck of a time getting over. And a lot of times there are. Uh, 
you're going to suffer for quite some time and trying to get back to where you were before you got sick. It can do a lot of damage. Um, so yeah, that makes perfect perfect sense to me. I, I, I do re recommend that too, but I, I haven't actually thought about it as I open a can. Um, bottles are a little bit different, but yeah, you're right because it is kind of exposed. Mm -hmm. so how do you grapes when you buy them? The way? How do you clean grapes? Oh, yeah, that's a great. So yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna take this brush and no. every every little grape, you know, you're trying to scrub off. That's exactly so what I was thinking. I love grapes, and I was gonna say, do I have to take a bath and brush every little grape? <laughs> <laughs> she said to wash everything, you know. And, and seriously, that, and, and so not to get too paranoid about it, but with with something like grapes, and that's a great question, or even uh, even a container of. Uh, strawberries where they come in that clamshell mm -hmm. uh, we always just put it under running water yeah. and and right. and sometimes with grapes I'll just kind of let it soak for a minute and then I and then I continue to rinse them off to get any residue that might be on the grapes but you don't scrub. I, screen, I don't huh? screen shaker the other day a lay a screen shaker you know okay a vessel with a screen across the top of it just dump it in there shake it around and dump the water out okay good but I don't know how you know how, how effective it is yeah, well, and, and something like grapes, like microorganisms are going to grow on certain types of food, and cantaloupe is one of them, and, and we are able to scrub it. Grapes, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times you're able to just rinse off whatever residue might be on there. Uh, microorganisms don't grow quite as readily on something like grapes. Uh, apples are a lot easier. Strawberries, um, I just rinse them under, mm -hmm. under running water. I don't use soap. Blueberries? The berries? Blueberries. Yeah, same thing. Them. Same thing. I just rinse those out. They're not. They're. They don't typically sit on the uh, on the ground. They're. They're typically up higher. So I think the more of the concern is something that either comes from the ground, like a potato, carrot, or something that grows on the ground, like your your melons and a lot of your leafy greens and things like that. Definitely have to be to be washed really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have an arm and anything, and I have to scrub my fruits and vegetables, and I have a brush and I have a scrub cloth. And those things like the berries and the uh, grapes and everything, there's a spray, vegetable spray that you spray on them and then rinse off and it's supposed to. Now I think, that's, I, I think that helps more with peace of mind than, than actually doing Don't the whole thing. Don't say that because that's what the doctor <laughs> Well, yeah, and of course, kind of just, anything that's out on the market like that, we always look to see, okay, what's the research behind it? Has it been proven to be effective in, in cleaning? Uh, and as far as the USDA says, that there has been no proven uh, research, or research that proves that this product is gonna clean your fruits and vegetables any better than just putting it under running water. They haven't. So, yeah, and, and so in a lot of the classes we teach, we, we do teach about saving money at the same time, and so we don't recommend people to buy that or spray that, but I think it does kind of make you feel better because you're like, okay, this is, this is nice and safe now because I, I use this product, but we typically don't recommend that and, until I see uh, something that says, yes, this definitely will help you. Uh, there, there will be times where you're gonna have some microorganisms on the product and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, you rinse it um, and it really well and then you eat it, you still could be ingesting something, but the chances are pretty low. You know, like with the cantaloupe or like with the spinach outbreak that they had. But typically our, our food supply is safe when you think about all the food that we consume and all the food that we produce and um, we don't hear about a lot of um, foodborne illnesses. Typically foodborne illnesses are going to come from um, poor food handling, like not cooking it to the proper temperature or cross-contamination where you use the same cutting board for raw meat and, and produce and mistakes like that that you might find like in a restaurant uh, type of an environment. But I think most people are uh, pretty careful. I think the one thing that I notice with people, especially um, with with the older population, well actually it's our, our, our young people too, is leaving meat out on the counter to thaw. I said, it's really calm. I know my, my mom did. She swore up and down. I never got sick. Yeah, it's fine. Is that a good idea? Yeah. Yeah, still, it's 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 I don't have room in the refrigerator to thaw turkey out. You what now? I do that with a turkey still. We did growing up, but there's no room in the refrigerator. To where, where do you put it? Huh? Where do you in put it? In the sink and let it thaw out. And in water? Yeah. Okay, well, and the, the, yeah, tur no, turkey's a different story because if you don't remember to take your turkey out of the freezer well, until the day before they thaw out, then you're in trouble. trouble. Because, but it doesn't fit in the sink, so you're going to put it in the sink, unless it's a little one, and the water's only going to come up to about, but you're supposed to thaw it in cold water. 
Because the idea is we don't want this turkey or whatever, it might be beef that you're thawing out. We don't want it to sit at room temperature because any bacteria that's present on that, on that poultry or on that beef is going to multiply. That's, that's just a fact. When we, of course, we have a, an example yeah, to show okay. for something like that. But yeah, if you have this amount of bacteria on, let's oh, say, the turkey or whatever it might be, and you leave it to sit out um, after about an hour, if you're going to have this many. This is just kind of a simple example. But what happens is every 20 to 30 minutes, it multiplies. The bacteria will multiply. It grows at room temperature. So if it's been out, it's now thawed, and it's still sitting at room temperature, or hotter, let's say you have a warm kitchen, it's going to multiply pretty rapidly. And you guys might know the, the doubling effect. You know, the higher numbers you get, the quickly it's, so this is going to be multiplying. And then after two hours, we've gone from this amount of bacteria on that poultry to this after just a couple hours. This is just kind of a basic example that bacteria is going to multiply. Are you going to cook it off? Are you going to kill it when you cook it? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> Not always, because there's something called spores. And some bacteria uh, uh, reshapes itself into the form of a spore, which is a protective mechanism it has to protect itself from the heat. And, um, and it can survive uh, the heat temperatures. And there's some bacteria that will withstand heat. And that's why you have to, something like um, botulism, the botulism spore. That's why uh, if you, any of you are canners or ever can before, you can't, you have to uh, pressure can something like green beans because it has to get up to 240 degrees in order to kill that microorganism. So it's not always cooked off. It's not always killed when it's cooked. And so um, it's, it's <coughs> just a chance you're taking. Will you get sick? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know, but it's a risk. And I don't know if you guys might know somebody or you might have, have experienced it. Um, when people get a foodborne illness, typically they just think it's a, um, just a, a bug that they have to get through. It's a virus. It's a stomach flu, what a lot of people call it. And a lot of times it is something you've ingested um, that your body can't kick out. So it's, it, it's a risk. We, we tell people to thaw their meat um, in the refrigerator or you can, um, in the sink with, uh, with, with water that you're changing out, make sure it's cold, or in the microwave. <laughs> you can't do that with turkey, obviously. You can't show it in the microwave. Um, but you just got to remember to take it out a couple days before Thanksgiving. It takes two, three days for it to thaw out, mm -hmm. something like a turkey. And you don't want to mess around with poultry. Salmonella can be, can be very serious, very, very serious. But so, so those are just some things that I wanted to point out about washing produce, washing your hands, and then not thawing, thawing your meat out at room temperature. Not that that has anything to do with snacks, but uh, that's an important thing to remember if you guys are uh, preparing, preparing your own food. Um, and I know here at the senior center when they prepare food, you know, they're, very, they're very safe. You don't have to worry about them not cooking their food at their proper temperature or anything <laughs> like that. Um, but that is another concern too, is there are some restaurants out there that um, you have to be pretty careful, you know, what you eat. Do you wash your fruits and vegetables before you put them in the refrigerator or after? That's a really good question. Um, you don't want to wash them until you're ready to eat them. Because uh, they say that on the skin of a lot of these fruits and vegetables, there's a, there's a, there's a layer of protection, a natural layer of protection that you don't want to wash off. And, and also, once you wash it, it, and it has that water exposed to it, it tends to, uh, it tends to lower the, the life of that. So like if you wash all your apples and then leave them out on the counter, they're going to deteriorate more rapidly than they would if you had just left them until you're ready to eat it. So yeah, very good question, but you want to wait until you're ready to eat it. Now berries and things like that, I, I wash them, but then you have to put a, a paper towel or something in the bottom of the container and that keep them mm -hmm. Right, you should go, yeah, so it has a little bit of humidity and, and, and so it stays a little bit fresher. Obviously when I make something like this, I rinse off all my grapes and I rinse off all my strawberries and, um, and then I, I put them together in here and so typically I'll, I'll probably have this eaten by the end of the day. But, um, but yeah, so if you're going to make something like a salad, you're going to put all the ingredients in there and yeah, then you have to wash them and that can be time consuming. The bag, the bag lettuce though, um, it, it says that you don't have to, to wash it. And from what I understand, you don't. But if you guys ever buy any bag lettuce or bag, whatever it might be, something that's already in a bag, so that you don't get it's already going to be washed. And any further washing isn't going to do any good. So, so just to put that out there. <laughs> Maybe that's something that you don't have to do because it's a lot easier too. Bag lettuce is a lot easier because it's already chopped up for you. Yeah. And it's, it's a fine choice. It's just a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. so, I'm kind of getting off on a different topic. I have a lot of uh, different topics that I like to talk about. 
Uh, but yeah, so that's just, just uh, some information for you guys. Hopefully it was helpful as far as making sure that you're fitting in some healthy snacks, giving you some ideas for healthy snacks, and also just making sure that you're being careful with uh, with food safety and making sure everything gets washed. Up. What about after the food is cooked? How long is it safe to be left out? Um, it kind of depends on the food. Um, so if you're talking about something pretty simple like uh, spaghetti, let's say, or in, yeah. Um, if it's cooked with meat in it. Yeah, and it, it's yeah, with something with meat in it. It's not going to the. Um, it's, it's it's hot after you 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 serve it and you put it on the counter. You don't put it away right away. It's going to stay fairly warm. The bacterial growth isn't really going to start until probably about between one and two hours. Wow. So because it's already been cooked, so it takes it a little bit longer. And you know, when as opposed to talking like about raw meat. So um, that's not a big concern. A big concern would be something like. Uh, what's my big the big, or the, the, this big bowl. If you have something like chili or soup or something like that and a big bowl like this on the counter, what's going to happen is so thick and dense that if you put it in the refrigerator right away, it's going to take a long time for that middle part to cool down. And so something like that, you do want to put it in a sh shallower container so it, it can cool off quickly. Or, ju or just set it in like some cold water where the water comes up to here and that's just going to cool it a little bit quicker. Uh, or like an ice water bath type of a thing, mm -hmm. but something like that's going to take a lot longer for it to cool down. So you've got to kind of help it. Um, sometimes I'll just put it in the freezer to give it like a quick, um, a, a quick cool down, and then I put it into the refrigerator. Uh, but typically you have a, you have an hour or two, and that's a concern during the holidays when there's a lot of food yes, sitting on. Left out a while. Yeah, and at homes you're not going to have it on heat or in ice. <laughs> you know, you're just going to put it on the table. People are going to serve themselves. And I've been at places where. Some of that food is sitting out for all day. Yeah. <laughs> so you kind of want to think before you go to you know, eat some of that because the bacteria is just multiplying. It's just growing. It's loving it. It loves that environment. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Do you have a question over there? Let's see hands. Oh, okay. Just a question about anything? Or <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Nutrition. Yeah, I'm limited. Yeah. Well, we're, yeah. So the grocery store and it yeah, says yeah, eggs sell by like Tuesday. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So how long can I still eat them after? It's a really good question. Not use by, but it uh -huh. says sell by. That's a sell by date. And that's the date that the grocery store has to sell that particular product. But with something like eggs, as long as they're kept in the carton and in the refrigerator, they're, you know, at a steady temperature, you can keep those eggs up to three weeks beyond the sell by date. So don't throw three them out. Weeks. Mm -hmm. wow. Three weeks. And that's on the USDA website. So. Uh, as long as they're kept refrigerated. Yeah, so that's a sell-by date. A lot of the products at the store are sell-by dates. Uh, pro, or, uh, milk, dairy is another one. Yeah. The sell-by date is, um, of milk, let's say, is um, October 14th. You, you don't have to consume